Hello. In this tutorial, a set of contour lines will be turned into a 2D contour bitmap, which will be turned into a terrain. Now, normally with a set of uh, contour lines, you would use the Tools 1 Convert Contour Lines to Landscape Terrain. For this set of lines, we would get a terrain that looks like this but this isn't what is wanted. What is wanted is a contour line, is a terrain that looks like this. So to uh, get there we will go to a, a set of co the same contour lines that you saw in color but these are all in white and usually you will see all the contour lines if you're getting them from somebody else they'll all be in white and uh, as trains are uh, rectangular in shape, you should always draw uh, an enclosing rectangle that goes around uh, all, all the polylines. If, if the contour lines come without this, you can add this later in the uh, 2D bitmap. Now, the first thing we have to do is get the dimensions of uh, the contour lines. So we'll, I'll click on the Adjust Object button and here are the minimum and maximum uh, coordinates and these are the numbers we want. The width, the depth, and the height so that we can properly uh, scale the terrain after we create it. Now I'm going to uh, click on the Edit button to uh, go into the uh, Edit Vertices module and if we zoom in you can see we've got okay we've got contour lines with all the vertices on them now contour lines are supposed to have the same spacing between each one of the contour lines or a multiple of that spacing to get to the next contour line if your contour lines have variable spacing then the procedure that I'm going to show you uh, won't produce the correct results. So now if I take and click on one of the vertices on this line I see that the Z is at zero. If I click on this one we now get 10 giving us a spacing of 10 units between the two. If I click on this one there we go. we're up to 20. Click on this one we're up to 30, 40, uh, 40 again, where we go, 50, and one at the very top will be 60. So we've got a 10 unit spacing uh, be between them all. So I'll turn off this module, and now it's time to uh, start uh, making our uh, 2D uh, bitmap. The first thing I'll do is uh, click on the top button so that we're looking down on the top view of the object and uh, I'll zoom out a bit and uh, we can see oh it looks like the lines are crossing and so forth that's because we're in perspective view so I want to click on and turn parallel on so that we're looking uh, uh, straight down on the object without any uh, change from perspective and now I'll take and I'll move the scroll wheel and I'll zoom in on tell the uh, we fill up the uh, to get as much space as possible to use so now you see I have the axis showing down here now we don't want this to uh, show up in our 2d bitmap so I'll go to prefs options select the viewer and turn off display view camera axes click OK and now they're gone. So now I want to save this uh, image out to uh, bitmap. So I'll click on the bitmap button. You can also get it by going through the files menu and uh, you can save to either the original folder or to a selected folder and we'll save it to the original folder where the DXF file is in. There are three choices to go out. There is uh, bitmap which we won't use because there's a problem I have to fix with that 
you don't you never want to use the JPEG when uh, working with uh, color maps for uh, terrains because the colors will be dithered and you will get a whole bunch of little uh, spots of different colors so we'll use the uh, PNG file format and you have two sizes that you can output you can output the exact width that we see now for the view window or we can go to thumbnail size and we can go from any size I could make it say uh, uh, 40 or 256 uh, units on the longest dimension but for this one I'm going to go out to 3000 which is larger than the uh, monitor screen so once I've got everything set up all I have to do is click oh if I wanted I could put a prefix on the front of the name that's going to be written and by just clicking on that, this button and this controls uh, overwrite so I could overwrite an, an existing file so I'll click OK and uh, now it's uh, that file has been saved out so what I'm going to do is uh, bring up uh, uh, an ancient uh, paint program called Paint Shop Pro that I keep using because it's got uh, very few controls in when I'm doing something like this. You can use any paint program that you like as long as it allows you to go from 16 million colors down to a 256 color palette. And so I'll bring up uh, Windows File Explorer and here's the file that we just wrote PNG file and I'll just drag it over and uh, now we have it in here and uh, if you down here uh, is the dimensions of the uh, the file so if I go back and put my cursor over it we'll see that it's 3000 by 2262 and 16 million colors and uh, if I uh, zoom in okay now we can see it, it going around now, if you didn't have that rectangular box that was around, you want to put one around now, and it should clip uh, all the ends of all the contour lines. And if any of them should not be connected, you want to connect them on so when you do a flood fill later, the color won't spill over into the uh, wrong locations. Now, uh, we have to go down to 256 colors and uh, so to do that I'll take and for I've got the background color here is black so I'll take and uh, pick up flood fill and have to watch that I don't click any of the the white spots and fill all the areas so the blue goes down now I've got a black background now the reason for the black background is that when we go convert from 16 million colors to 256 colors the black will end down in the first position for the 256 color palette so then all I have to do is go uh, colors uh, if I counted the colors we'd find out there's only two colors in the bitmap which is what it should be and then if I go, go colors decrease color depth to 256 click OK I now have a color palette now if I bring this uh, up and uh, edit the palette here's our 256 positions it starts with 0 here and ends with 255 down there and uh, this is uh, 0 this is 1 so we've only got the two colors so now you can you would uh, use other colors going up to uh, for the colors that we're going to color the bitmap and it doesn't matter what the color is because all that Accutrans uses is the index that's assigned uh, that that color was assigned to so I'll close that down and I'll also now I'll close this down and uh, what I'll do is I'll load that same file back in okay now uh, if you do this many uh, times you'll want to create your own uh, color palette and save it so you don't have to use it over uh, create it over and over again and so while I'm sitting here in the 16 million colors all I have to do is go up to uh, colors come down here to load palette 
and I've got choices on what I want. I'm going to take the nearest color match and I've already saved out what I want for this project and so I'll just click on that, click OK and it does the closest color match and if I go back to uh, Edit Palais we can see, okay, there is my, my background color was the blue. I had already put it in that position, so that's there. And the white that I used is all the way up here in the topmost position. And uh, these are the colors that I'm going to uh, use for the uh, to color the uh, bitmap. Now, the thing on this bitmap is that uh, in the uh, one corner of it, uh, there must be water because uh, they've got a uh, a zero uh, elevation profile that's at the uh, at the zero level. So what I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the first color up, so it'll already be up ten units. So instead of this, so it'll be uh, going up like this will be the for the order going up. So I'll click OK. Now, uh, depending what's going on, sometimes it it probably better to start at your highest elevation in any area that you want to work at and then work down to the lower ones. So now I'm going to uh, click here. Now, uh, if I click on this, okay, my top, my, my highest color is a gray and then the next color is uh, yellow. So what I'm going to do is uh, I want to do this area here so I'll zoom in a little more and uh, So I'm, I'm going to click and color this yellow here. Yellow's hard, yellow's hard to see against white. I should have really picked a different color. Okay, it's there. And uh, then I want to go over here and click just outside. Okay, that's yellow. Now if I zoom, zoom in, zoom out. Okay. You'll have lots of fun if you're doing a, a monster uh, uh, outline to fix up. Okay, so now I go and now I'll go and uh, click here and I'll pick the white color. And now I'll, the uh, reason I'm doing this is when you try to change the color on uh, a line, uh, you'll only get little pieces because it usually won't flow all the way. So if I use the color, the same color as the white there I've got all that filled and now that's supposed to be the highest one so I just have to click here again so select that and like that and now I've got the uh, highest color and I didn't get it quite right because you can see the I spread out uh, along along my edge but that wasn't bad I didn't uh, that I could fix up as I as I work my way around so once you do that, you just continue out and you work your way around flood filling and changing the colors. And then eventually, uh, you will end up with one that looks like this. I completed, I, I already did one for the project, so uh, to save time. So now with, uh, with that ready, we can go back to uh, uh, Accutrans and uh, now I'll do file uh, open, open DEM as bitmap to DEM a lot of the file formats you can drag and drop them but uh, bitmap to DEM or bitmap to 3, 3D is one of them that you actually have to go and uh, select what you want and here's the bitmap we want so I'll double click on that it comes up it tells me I've got the width uh, and the height of the bitmap and now it, it, there's also the formula here of what goes in you take the the palais index times the multiplier and add the minimum height to that and that gives you the height that will be stored in Accutrans so uh, I want a multiplier of uh, 10 and so if it was uh, index 1 will be 1 times 10 is 10 plus a minimum height of 0 is going to give us uh, 10 for the for the height and for spacing I'm going to go for uh, one unit on the spacing 
so now I'll click OK and that's read in and we have our uh, DEM terrain now the dimensions aren't quite right but that doesn't matter uh, all I want to do is see if I've got all the colors going in the right order if I couldn't really see what's going right on the heights it, I could go and uh, I could put in a larger number and scale up or if they were too high I could put in a smaller number and scale down okay so now that looks right and uh, now the uh, it's always good to have uh, a border going around because if you have uh, uh, s something close up to the edge it sometimes gets messed up when you convert over to a 3d mesh so what I'm going to do is uh, this elevation is zero here if I go back here our lowest elevation is zero okay so I'm going to drop all the faces that are z are at or below zero so I'll click to convert to uh, 3d and uh, we'll go up to if we went up all the way we'd be getting 14 over 14 million uh, uh, triangles or over just about 4 million but we'll go with uh, 906,000 and I'll select this radio button to drop faces if elevation is at or below zero click OK and here we have our uh, mesh now uh, I'm gonna bring this up and now I'm going to load in uh, I'm going to load in the the mesh we started off with and there you can see it on the object I could have actually loaded that mesh uh, on top of the uh, the DEM before we uh, came out so you can see it looks the same as what our uh, map started out and uh, we've got elevations and so forth but the sizes are wrong so now I'll go to the adjust object and uh, I'll uh, click on the I'll click on calculate scale brings this up select the x-axis and uh, the dimension that we saw before was 830.48 uh, I'll click the uh, calculate button and that gives us our factor okay it's filled in over here now uh, our height of 70 uh, is uh, right before we saw 60 but because I, I put the lowest elevation of 0 in the first uh, index so that I could actually get rid of the other faces that were at zero the uh, the, the mesh is, uh, is uh, elevated up 10 units higher than uh, uh, what it should really be so then I don't want to change the uh, the height on the z-axis so I'll put in a one there and now scale and now our uh, object is of the uh, correct dimensions and the correct uh, height and I'll click OK and uh, if I went to uh, the extrude module and uh, we'll say oh, we'll, we'll just extrude down one put a flat bottom on it extrude click OK and uh, check watertight mesh is watertight okay there we have our uh, our mesh in the shape we wanted and it's uh, ready for uh, 3D printing. That concludes this tutorial. Goodbye.